something the authorities have denied. Mr Lungu had retired from politics in 2021, but announced his return to the political fray last October. He says that since then he's been subject to numerous unconstitutional actions. While denying targeting Mr Lungu, the police chief said the former president would be summoned to explain his statement that there could be a change of government in Zambia before the 2026 general election. The police has been warning Mr Lungu about being arrested and prosecuted for what they called engaging in activities that disrupt public order and safety. Meanwhile, Human Rights Watch has expressed serious concerns on the right to freedom of speech in Zambia. Well, the former president, Edward Lungu, is on the phone now and joins us from the capital, Lusaka. Good morning to you and welcome to the program. When you say you are Good virtually morning. under house arrest, Mr. President, what do you mean? Well, virtually I am under house arrest in the sense that I cannot move out of my house without being accosted and challenged by the police and driving me back home. Uh, they took me out of a plane where I was supposed to have traveled for a conference just recently. The other time they refused to let me go for medication. The other time they refused me to go to church. And in fact, on several occasions, they have sent police to say, you can't go out. So this is a build up, I guess, which they want to culminate into my arrests. And uh, I'm ready for that. The good thing is I'm ready. I have also realized that uh, they're not resting because of their failures in delivering what they promised the Zambian people in a number of areas. So, uh, as of now, as we talk, they've got 25 dockets, uh, all of them bordering on treason and some other serious charges, uh, which they were evaluating only yesterday with a view to coming to arrest me. But because they know that I'm ready and I have uh, the support of the people because what I'm speaking is what the people are saying. And, Mr. And, and, and that, uh, without cutting you uh, through, apologies for that. When you say you've been accosted by the police, could you give us examples of what are they saying? What are they doing? Well, uh, let me give you the latest example, which I think was uh, widely circulated. I went to the Copper Belt. On my way to the Copper Belt, I stopped over in Kawa, which is the central part of, Lusa, of, of the country. I wanted to pay courtesy call on the bishop of the ch Catholic Church there. They just came where we were in the bishop's office and told me, you can't be here, you shouldn't be here. And the, when the bishop asked why, they said, the, you are not supposed to be here. This man cannot come here without letting us know. Is that so what the they say? You have to let them know of all your movements? They, they say that I could not travel and take out a call on the bishop without them knowing. And they told the bishop that you can't host this man without letting us know. And we were both shocked. Mr. Lungu, we had in a statement from the government and the communications office which said, and I'm going to quote what they said, we wish to clarify that former President Lungu has never been placed under house arrest and that Mr. Lungu is now freely traversing our cities and towns, exercising his rights to freedom of speech and association. I wonder then, when you talk about unconstitutional actions against you that you're subjected to, what do you concretely point to? Uh, you see, when I get out of my house in the morning, for example, I go jogging, they come for me. They say I shouldn't be jogging on the public streets because I'm inciting people. And consequently, I've stopped going out to jog. It's a typical example. Is I go to church in the morning. Yep. Do you see I go this? To church in the do you think this is a way to block you? Because that's what you're sounding like you're saying, that this is to block you from speaking to people, from returning to politics. Well, I've returned to politics. There's no doubt about it. That I have, and I've made it very clear. And I'm saying that I'm ready to face the consequences of coming back to politics. There's no doubt about it. And they know and it's not a hidden it's a matter. But uh, I would like to have access to the freedoms enshrined in my constitution, like any other Zambian. Mr. Pre about Mr. President, to meet as, people here. as a former head of state, do you still enjoy police protection at your home with you when no, you travel? No, uh, I don't have. They withdrew basically everything. All the entitlements of a retired president have been withdrawn. I have a ragtag security system which I have made myself and I have to pay for it from my own resources. Right? 
and they've withdrawn the office that they had given me as the, the former president on uh, Kablonga Bishop Road. They had given me one vehicle for use as administration, uh, and they've withdrawn that. Uh, we had the chef or somebody working in the household. They withdrawn that. Everything was withdrawn. And it's public mm. knowledge. Well, they wrote to me to say, you are no longer Mr. going Pres to be treated Mr. President, as the former president. We will keep an eye on this story as it continues. The former president of Zambia, Mr. Edgar Lungu there. This is news there here on the BBC World Service. For the 21st century, building resilience, education systems for increased access to inclusive, lifelong quality and indeed relevant learning in Africa. The theme places education and skills development at the center of the continent's social economic transformation agenda. This theme resonates with our country's policy direction of ensuring inclusive quality learning for all our citizens. In addition, the 2024 Africa Freedom Day theme is in line with our own theme for our Diamond Jubilee Independence Anniversary, 60 years strong, honoring our heritage, embracing our future. Fellow citizens, as a continent, we are making sustained investments in higher education, science, technology, research, and innovation. Here at home, your government is implementing a number of measures to promote increased access to inclusive, lifelong, quality, and relevant learning. In 2022, your government reintroduced the free education policy, and the response from our people has been positive, extremely positive, with more than 1.6 million new enrollments from early childhood through to secondary level. Government is also providing support to learners through bursary schemes, loans, and meal allowances that are benefiting our citizens throughout the country. Fellow citizens, in light of the free education policy, government has accelerated investment in education infrastructure. Through the increased Constituent Development Fund, CDF, we are rapidly building new schools and buying desks to ensure that every citizen has a place from which to learn. To ensure that every student has a qualified teacher, government has recruited 39,250 <coughs> trained teachers since 2021. This year alone, 4,200 such teachers will be recruited. Fellow citizens, our government is committed to making Zambia a place where every child, regardless of their background, their parentage, has access to inclusive, lifelong, quality, and relevant learning. A place where every citizen has the opportunity to reach their full potential. A place where education is not a privilege, but a right. Zambia, like many of our neighbors, faces the worst drought since records began due to the increasing impact of climate change, which appears to be here to stay. We will all have to make difficult decisions as we work to protect our citizens, but we remain true to our conviction that education is the greatest equalizer, investment, and inheritance. A resilient education system, accessible to all, is the cornerstone of a prosperous Zambia. Fellow citizens, as we commemorate Africa Freedom Day, let us celebrate the power of education in transforming lives and building a better Zambia, a better Africa, and indeed, a better world. Let us honor our heritage and embrace our future. We wish you, our fellow citizens, and African brothers and sisters, a very happy Africa Freedom Day. God bless Zambia, God bless Africa, and our world. And may God bless our continued freedom. I thank you for your kind attention.
That was the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Hakainde Hichlema, addressing the nation on the eve of Africa Freedom Day.